Welcome to Solving One Step Equations with Division. I'm Mr. Pi, the math guy, and I'm going to be your host today. You have to remember, when solving equations, the goal is to isolate the variable, meaning to get the variable by itself on one side of the equation. Talking about sides of an equation, you'll often hear me refer to equations as the left, right, and middle of an equation. That's because when solving equations, we have to use properties of equalities, which we're going to learn about, to keep the balance. You're going to see that here in upcoming examples. But for this example, all I want you to understand is that the equal sign is the middle of the equation. Since this is the middle, on the left-hand side of the equation, we have 3x. And on the right-hand side of the equation, we have negative 24. I want you to keep that in mind as we go along, because our goal is to isolate the variable. Therefore, we want to get the variable by itself, so we can see the variables on the left-hand side. So we're going to have to get rid of this 3, and that's what this video is about, teaching you how to get rid of that coefficient of 3. When solving one-step equations, you always want to keep in mind the properties of equality. This is how we accurately show our work and prove our answer is correct. The property we're going to be working with in today's video segment is division property of equality. It reads, for all real numbers, A, B, and C, if A is equal to B, then A divided by C is equal to B divided by C. Pretty simple thing to do. And what it means is if we divide one side by a number to maintain this equality or to keep this balance we have to divide the other side by the same value. Here we have a numerical example. Example, 3 times 6 is equal to 18. We know that as being true but we can change it a little bit by say dividing each side by 3. And because 3 times 6 divided by 3 the threes divide out, leaving us with a six. Eighteen divided by three is a, should be a commonly known division factor, multiplication factor. That gives us six. And we can see the division property of equality at work here. Whatever we do to one side to the equation, we have to do to the other side. We're going to see how the division property of equality works in the coming examples. Solving one-step equations with division. As implied by the title of the slide, we're going to be solving equations with division. Uh, we're going to have a little explanation first. And in problem number one, we have 2x is equal to negative 26. A lot of students get lost here because they forget the meaning of saying 2x. It really means 2 times x or 2 multiplied by x. And the inverse of multiplication is division. So what we're going to do here is divide each side by 2. And we're using the division property of equality here. When we divide each side by 2, 2x two divided by 2 on the left of the equation, that cancels out and leaves us with 1x on the left-hand side. We traditionally don't write that at 1 in front of the x. A coefficient of 1 is not needed. Negative 26 divided by 2 is negative 13. You probably should be able to do that in your head. If not, you could use a calculator. Or you could use long division. What we can do here is we can check our answer real quick, and if everything's done right, this works out pretty easy. So what we do is we substitute our solution, negative 13, into x in the original equation. So we have negative 13 in for the x. So we have negative, or 2 times negative 13 is equal to negative 26. And multiplying this out if you need to, 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 1 is 2. And that gives us a negative 26 because a positive times a negative is always negative. So our work does check out for that first problem. There you should see and notice that we use the division property to divide each side by 2. And problem number 2, reading it, it's negative 5 times x or negative 5x is equal to 7 and 3 tenths. 7 and 3 tenths. We're going to, again, use the same property, the division property of equality, we're going to divide each side by negative 5. 
On the left-hand side, the negative fives, they divide out, leaving 1x. And on the right-hand side, we have some basic math to do. We're going to rewrite this as 7 and 3 tenths divided by a negative 5. Now, as you probably learned in a basic math class, to do this, we first need to convert this mixed number into an improper fraction. 10 times 7 is 70. And 70 plus 3 is 73, so that gives me my numerator. I went 10 times 7 and then added that 70 to the 3 to get 73. That's my numerator, 73 over 10. And on the right-hand side of this little expression, instead of division, we're going to be putting multiplication. We're going to multiply that by the reciprocal of negative 5, which is negative 1 fifth. If you imagine negative 5 as a fraction, negative 5 over 1, that would be the reciprocal or the inverse. Before we get our final answer, we're going to multiply the numerator. 73 times 1 is 73. And 10 times negative 5, well, that gives a negative 50. We're going to put that negative out front. And that could be our answer, a reduced improper fraction, since 73 and 50 do not have any common factors. You could write this as a mixed number since 50 goes into 73 one time. That would be a negative 1. That would leave us with 23 left over, so negative 1 and 23 fiftieths. So either one of those could be our answer. If we go into our check mode here, just to make sure our answer is correct. We're going to substitute our solution into the original equation. The original equation was negative 5x or times x, so we're going to multiply that by our solution. I'm going to use the negative 73 over 50, the improper fraction. And that, need, and that should be a 73, not a 75. that needs to be equal to a positive 7 and 3 tenths. So on the left hand side we'll do some multiplication. If you need to put that over 1 you can, that negative 5. And here before we multiply numerator to numerator and denominator to denominator we can cross cancel across this multiplication. We can use a factor of 5. 5 goes into negative 5, negative 1 time. And 5 goes into 50, 10 times. So we're going to be working with these new numbers negative 1 times negative 73 gives us a positive 73 and 1 times 10 gives us 10 and so we have the improper fraction 73 over 10 being equal to 7 and 3 tenths which we know of course is true 7, 10 goes into 73 7 times with 3 left over so our work does check out And our last problem, problem number three, the only real difference between problem number three and problem number one is that we have a decimal. Negative 6 tenths x is equal to 42. To solve this equation, since it's multiplication, we're going to divide each side using the division property of equality by negative 0 0.6. On the left-hand side, the negative 0 0.6 is divide out, leaving us with x, thus achieving our goal of isolating the variable. On the right-hand side, we have to divide 42 by negative 0.6. Well, as you should know, division by decimal isn't allowed, so what we do is we have to multiply both of these by 10. 42 multiplied by 10 is 420. Negative 0 0.6 multiplied by 10 is going to give me negative 6, and 420 divided by negative 6 is a negative 70. So that's our solution. Moving into our check mode, we substitute our solution, negative 70, into our original equation. Negative 0 0.6 times negative 70. And that needs to be equal to a positive 42. When we do this multiplication, negative 0.6 times negative 70, 6 times 0 is 0, 6 times 7 is 42. 
since 6 tenths has one decimal place, our decimal starts at the right at 420, moves to the left one time, giving me 42 is equal to 42. So the work does check out. One thing I didn't do was uh, circle my solutions here, or box off my solutions. Oops, this is actually, oh, here's the solution here, a little goofed up. And here's the solution here. Solving one step equations, your turn. What you should do at this point is pause the video and probably should time yourself. It shouldn't take a whole lot of time to do these problems. Maybe at most I'd say 10, 12 minutes. When you're done, what you should do is unpause the video to continue the video and get the solutions with the work to make sure your work matches my work, which is pretty solid work. I think your teacher would be happy with it. So here what we have is negative 3x is equal to 45. I'm going to stop and give a longer pause here. Hopefully, I remember that within the editing. I'm going to clear my throat. Hopefully, I notice these lulls in the tape for the pause. Anyway, so what I'm going to show you here now is that you're back to the video from solving the problems. In problem number one on your turn, we have negative 3x is equal to 45. So what you need to do to solve this problem is divide each side by a negative 3. And when you divide each side by a negative 3, using the division property of equality, the negative 3 is on the left-hand side. They cancel out, leaving you with x is equal to. And then doing this division, either by hand, long division in your head, or with a calculator, 45 divided by negative 3. Well, that gives you a negative 15. Hopefully, you checked your work and you know that works out to be the correct answer. And the next problem we have, negative 6x is equal to 12 and 3 fifths. What we'll do for this particular equation, since it is a multiplication with the variable x on the left-hand side, we'll divide each side by negative 6. As I modeled in the first part of this video, on the left-hand side, the negative 6's is going to divide out, leaving you with 1x. On the right-hand side, we're going to rewrite this as 12 and 3 fifths divided by negative 6. And how we're going to solve this from here is we're going to change this, in, this mixed number into a improper fraction. 5 times 12 is 60. And 60 plus 3 is 63. So this 12 and 3 fifths as a improper fraction is 63 over 5. And we're going to multiply that by negative 6 is reciprocal, which is negative 1 over 6. Before we multiply our numerators, we're going to check for common factors in the numerators and the denominators. 63 and 6 have a factor of 3. 63 divided by 3 is 21, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. There are no other common factors, so I'm going to multiply the numerators. 21 times 1, that is equal to 21. And then 5 times 2, that is equal to 10. A positive times a negative is a negative. And I can write that as a mixed number, 2 and 1 tenth. If I were so inclined, I could write that as the decimal number, negative 2.1. So either one of these would be an acceptable answer, I think. You have to be aware of that, too, that these are all acceptable answers. In problem number 3, we have negative 4 tenths x is equal to 8 and 1 tenth. To solve this problem, since we are multiplying with the variable negative 4, or negative 0.4x, we're multiplying negative 0.4 by x, we're going to divide each side by negative 0 0.4. On the 
on the left hand side the negative 0.4's cancel out leaving 1x the variable is now isolated 8 and 1 tenth divided by negative 0.4 we are going to multiply both of those numbers by 10 so we end up with 81 divided by 4 actually would be a negative 4 doing that division This is how you would do it with long division. 4 goes into 8 2 times. 2 times 4 is 8. So that leaves nothing left over. I bring down my 1. 4 does not go into 1, so I put a 0 in here as a placeholder. I have to put a decimal in. Put a 0 and bring it down. And 4 goes into 10 2 times. 2 times 4 is 8. Subtract, get 2 left over, add a 0, bring it down, and 4 goes into 25 times. So we get the decimal number, 20.25. So you saw me there, find the answer as a decimal. I can write that answer as a mixed number now. And that should be a negative because it was a negative 4. So it should be x is equal to negative 20.25 or negative 20 and a quarter. Or as I had up here initially, 81, negative, 80, negative 81 over 4. So either one of these would be an acceptable answer.